really talk about appetizers and stuff like that. I realized I didn't do much of it for Thanksgiving, but Christmas is a good opportunity to go over it. You're gonna have a party before the meal. Everyone's gonna hang out. They're gonna be drinking, having fun, and they need something to eat. And there is no better, more foolproof, easier way to satisfy that period of the day than with a really well thought out cheese plate. Cheese plates can sort of be an afterthought. A lot of that stuff, crudités are an afterthought, but if you put a little bit of thought into it and you pay attention, you can make it as important as the meal is. Cause you really just have to think of it as an extension. You don't want stuff too heavy. You want flavor, you want to get people excited for what the meal is going to be. There's a few things that I like to do to make it look nice, to make it a well-rounded, and most importantly, to have really good cheeses available. And there's a few strategies and general approaches that I'm going to try and go over that hopefully can set you up to kind of make any sort of cheese plate you want, just following a few simple steps. So let's just get right into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk cheese. Now, generally, what I would say is that for any good cheese plate, you're going to want to at least three different cheeses. Generally, one hard, one soft, a blue, something aged, nothing too redundant. So three is usually the minimum that I like to provide and you can kind of add up to there. So today I have a couple of local cheeses. I got these from Whole Foods. So if you check them out there, there's a good chance you might be able to find these, especially if you're in New York. So I'm gonna choose to show you four. You can sort of pick and choose or you can get the idea and sort of deviate and use whatever you know you like. First one is this cheddar, this brand of cheddar just released from Whole Foods last year and let me tell you it is amazing it's not too expensive it's five bucks for this which is going to be plenty for this cheese platter it's called sweet red grass-fed cheddar from barber's farmhouse and imported from england with the hard cheeses that i like to use i like to use an aged cheddar and i don't know how long this is aged for it doesn't really say and it's got that crystallization those crystals that crunch you taste when you taste any sort of good cheese. It's these sort of calcium, lactate, amino acid kind of build up things that happen inside the cheese. I don't know the science behind it. It's something called triozyne crystals or something. All I know is that that's the sign and the mark of a well-aged cheese. So when you taste that, and it's nice and balanced, has flavor, has those crunchies, you really got a good cheese, and this is one of them. This is one of my favorite cheddars to use, and it's going in my cheese plate. Next, I have another aged cheese, but it's a different flavor. These two can probably be used interchangeably. This is a three-year-old aged Gouda. This is a little bit more pungent. It still has the age, it still has the crystals, but it's a nice sort of mix. Feel free to use one or the other or both. I'm not a big fan of blue cheeses. I like funky cheeses, but I'm not like obsessed with them. This right here is one of the only ones that I am obsessed with. It's called Humboldt Fog, and it's this sort of aged blue, and it's got this creaminess, firm texture in the middle, it gets creamier out around the rind, and it doesn't have a lot of funk. It's creamy, it's almost like a blend between a brie, a goat cheese, and sort of like a blue cheese. So again, I like to use this. And then I have this, this is a local cheese. It's a Hudson Valley Camembert. Whole Foods also has this. This is one of my favorites. Apparently it's an award-winning one. Old Chatham Shepherding Company. Camembert is a soft cheese just like Brie. It's got a little bit more funk than Brie does. The rind is good, but the inside is super creamy, like butter. So I like to have that as well. So there's no sort of general rule to this. You can actually do whatever you want. You could do mozzarella, you could do burrata, any sort of cheese that you know you like. My general approach to the cheese plate, instead of just putting this block here and this block here, I wanna cut these up into smaller pieces and then break down my cheese board into segments. So it's almost like instead of one big cheese board, you have sort of like three to four mini cheese boards scattered around the plate. So that if you're on one side of the table and somebody else wants what you got, everybody can sort of get the goodies. So I'm just gonna cut these in half.
Now I got them nicely cut up so I can kind of scatter them around the board however I see fit. Next I got all my goodies. Here I've got some grapes, I've got some beef jerky which I actually like adding into my cheese plates. I like it, it adds nice flavor. I got some candied pecans, pecans, whatever. Some salted roasted almonds. I got some nice thin cut Genoa salami. Some prosciutto that the guy cut really thin but then just didn't package it properly. When you get prosciutto it should be packaged in its full kind of slice, laid flat in one layer, never overlapping each other. This guy piled it all on, but it's okay because I sort of wanted to plate it in little kind of chunks like that anyway. And then we have just another different type of sopressata. You can kind of get them pre-cut. You can kind of go a little fancier and get one of these. I'm just gonna cut this guy up real quick. I've got some cornichons, which are nice. A little fig jam, which some of you probably recognize. I have this nice little acai honey container, which I like having these kind of small guys on my cheese board. And then a little foie gras that I got as a gift from our neighbor who just visited France. So that's going in my cheese platter. Just some crackers. These guys are my favorite. If you haven't tried these, seek them out. They're some of the best crackers, especially for a cheese platter that you can buy and some of my favorite. So these are really good and I'm gonna use them. So these guys have, have been hanging and have dried out, so they've got these strings in them. You just want to look out for those. And they have this paper and casing that they're in that you have to get rid of. You don't want to eat that. So I like to just cut it in half because I may not use all of that. The main difference between this and like the salami that I had earlier is like this is just dry aged. Um, it's hung, it's dried out. That one has a higher moisture content. This has just got a little bit more flavor. We're just gonna try and cut little thin rounds. we're ready to just start assembling. I'm gonna use some herbs to sort of border it, make it look very festive, and then we're gonna get this thing nicely plated. Start off with a cracker, my Humboldt Fog, which is both creamy and crumbly. A couple pecans, a little dab of beef jerky, a little prosciutto, and a little bit of honey. Now that's a cheese plate. Good cheese is either gonna make or break this cheese platter for you. So do a little bit of work, go get some good cheese, go to your cheese shop, Talk them through what you want. These are my particular favorites. They go really well, and they sort of generally please everybody. We've got good meats, nuts, some foie gras. So now that you have no excuse, you know how to make a cheese platter, you know what goes on it. Of course, this is simply my strategy for a cheese platter. There's many approaches you could take. This, I find, works for me. So cheese is everyone's favorite. So you can't go wrong here. 